Welcome everybody, GSC Invitational 2, and we're finally in the winner's bracket round 2. That's actually because we choose to give the players in the winner's bracket some extra time to play and essentially punish those in the loser's bracket. Well, it's not exactly a punishment, it's more just that we have to keep up with the schedule, so the loser's bracket will have to play more frequently as a matter of uh, cause, if we don't want this event to last two months, or, no, it's going to last two months, but, uh, you know, like four months. Okay, so here we are, and we have a player that we actually haven't featured on this channel, or perhaps even two. Pogis, whom you might already be familiar with, especially you viewers on my channel, and Alice, who is really good. She's really good. Um, she just kicked my ass plenty of times. Uh, mind you, I wasn't that great, but I'm pretty sure she could uh, still destroy me without a second thought. And let's see how she fares in this matchup, because Podges is no pushover. All right, and before we start, uh, be sure to, you know, leave a like if you like this series, and comment down below whatever you want to comment, and subscribe to stay in, you know, in, in touch. All right, here we are. So we got lax leads, double lax leads. So the um, whole story about the cloy leads, that goes out the window because, you know, just a bunch of lax leads. Poges is going to go for early spikes. He goes to his cloy first, and it's toxic, so no clamp screech shenanigans. Uh, I'm going to take that plus one rather well. It is, I think, a maximum roll to take it out there. But, uh, oh, okay, so we see Rest Cloister, which to me would suggest that Podges' team is a stall. And in fact, we see Heal Bell Mill Tank. I actually was expecting something like Blissey, but okay. Mill Tank acts as a good counter. It's the first time I commentate a game with Mill Tank. Um, not, it's not counter, but it's a decent check for Curse Lax. As Rapid Spin Starmie comes in, risking a para, and there it is. So, para is going to be quite annoying, as that's not really going to let Alice have many opportunities to, uh, spin. And it's also going to be a little bit annoying for the cloister, uh, facing the cloister. So, yeah. However... There's a chance that Alice also has a heal veller on her side. In comes Rhydon. So the chances automatically go down with the presence of this Rhydon here. Um, for, for a good reason. So stall team 101, you really, really, really have to focus on the type synergy. And uh, you can't stack too many weaknesses. What the Rhydon in the presence of Starmie suggests to me is that this Starmie may also have T-Wave um, and no sub substitute. So Surf, T-Wave. And um, furthermore, you you can't have a Miltank or a Blissey, which are the common Heal Bell users, because you're just going to have too many Machamp Week Pokemon on what would otherwise be a stall team. So instead, I think this is a Paralysis offense team. But I could be wrong. So, in comes Rhydon. And finally we see the spikes on Alice's end. So, Or Poges' end, but Alice is the one getting the spikes. Dodges a Toxic and is in a slight lead here. And is going to boom. Which puts Alice in a somewhat advantageous position. As spinning away those spikes means they're going to be gone for good. And, ooh, okay, a crit on Pogis' lax. That's really, really problematic for Pogis. Losing not... A, if they're going to lose spikes as well, it's... I don't know how they'll manage to hold off against that Rhydon, to be completely honest. No spikes, and... And they lose one of the most offensive win cons in Snorlax. And as you see here, Miltank does a rather good job 
at, uh, you know, taking hits. Also dealing a minor bit of chip damage. I'm actually kind of surprised I haven't seen Growl on Mill Tank yet, because that's what makes it a good Curse Lax check in the first place. Maybe Pogis is prior. There it is. So Pogis is probably prioritizing the damage on the Lax, hoping for a crit. And the reason is probably also because this lacks maybe sleep talk. Could be. Oh no, never mind. It's cursed. So yeah. Um, my commentary is becoming worse and worse by the minute. Ride on. Doing a whole lot of nothing this game. We have yet to see if Alice has a secondary zap answer. And what I mean with that is that Rhydon isn't really amazing at handling Zapdos. And Lax was just in range. That would have been a max roll. Snore max. The big bad bear going to sleep. Miltank comes in. And Alice could honestly just take a risk and go to Starmie, spin away those spikes. Probably doesn't, maybe doesn't want to. Okay. Yeah, it goes in on the Growl, taking no damage in the process, and can spin away those spikes if Lady Luck is on their side, yes. And with, with it being paralyzed, it's going to be very hard to 1v1 that T-Tar since it has Crunch. Uh-oh. Okay, there's the T-Wave. That's going to help a little bit. Recover, and better hope not for any Spadef drop. As you can see... The Starmie is in no position to just, you know, recover or do anything without taking a huge 64%. So the Marowak outspeeds the Titar, and it also survives a two-hit KO from Zapdos, unless Spikes were there. So Marowak putting in quite a lot of work. No full para, takes out the Miltank. Titar is... I don't know, probably not going to put up much of a fight anymore. So this game was lightning quick. And this just goes to show you how a couple of Thunder Waves can really, really help you and assist you. But in reality, I'd also have to say that the crits were especially helpful. The good use of the boom uh, against Pogis' Cloister because, well, that is a very huge check for Rhydon and for Marowak. I, I like this uh, idea, especially because lots of players, if they find that they're in an advantageous position, will boom on Starmie, will boom their Cloister on Starmie to keep the spikes, but you get a trade because now you trade, you know, spikes for a potential Marowak answer. So in that sense, really good on him. Uh on her, pardon me, on Alice. So yeah, great, great job. Game two, and we see Jinx lead. Okay, lovely kiss. Are we gonna see a thief or a sub? Thief, thief it is. That's because the lefties on Lax and or Zapdos or Raikou are just so valuable. And Chloe is gonna come in. Alice, once again, or no, not once again, but um, Alice this time is the one with the spikes advantage, per se. And is going to just go for surf damage on that Chloe. Essentially surfing that Cloyster to a point where, to a point of no return. And it almost seems like Podges has returned with the same team. I'm seeing a lot of this recently. A lot of players going with the same team. Do they not have the time to build something else? Or do they actually have some minor variation? It looks as though in this case we may have a minor variation or it's just an unrevealed from last game. No, it is a variation. So there's also Jolteon on this team. Interestingly enough, the Lax is taking Spike's damage and all of that damage from uh, Zap is going to stick. And once again, another crit. Another crit with T-Bolt, a, a move which otherwise wouldn't even have come close to a three-hit KO. 
um, manages to put Lax in an extremely dangerous range. And now there's Miltank and Jolteon on either end. But Alice's team being something more along the lines of double electric and also having a golem. Which, to me, makes sense. That explains the uh, decision to spam Surf against that toxic cloister. Golem isn't entirely safe against this Jolteon. Because HP water is more common. But just being a tad greedy there. And, wow, okay, yeah. Uh, I mean, with the offensive win cons once again being eliminated and clearly the spike's going to be, well, gone as a result of how this game played out, Podge's forfeits, and I don't even think we're 15 minutes in for this video, so... Alice doing an excellent job, and this is a perfect example of what I had said at the beginning of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Alice will be moving on to winner's bracket round three. So sparing herself a couple extra matches. And Pogis is going to hopefully, you know, bring, bring terror into the eyes of those that are in the loser's bracket. So good luck to you out there. And stay tuned, and I hope you enjoy.